cracked highways, cliffs collapsing with barely a warning, California's iconic coastline is unraveling. These are not a single disaster, but sudden failures erupting in hotspots such as Del Mar and Portuguese Bend, all in the past week. Scientists warn that back-to-back -back winter storms, record tides, and saturated ground are pushing these bluffs to their limits. Is this just another rough winter, or the beginning of a much bigger breakdown? The answer could change everything for millions living at the edge. A parade of winter storms has battered California's coastline for weeks, stacking one system after another with barely a break in between. Each storm brings heavy rain that soaks deep into the cliffs, making the ground heavier and more prone to slipping. At the same time, the Pacific is sending powerful long period swells, waves that travel thousands of miles and strike the base of the bluffs with concentrated force. These waves arrive when water levels are at their highest with king tides lifting the ocean several feet above normal. The result is that waves hit higher up the cliffs, reaching areas that usually stay dry, and carving away at already weakened edges. In some places, the ground has stayed saturated for weeks, unable to dry out between storms. Roads and neighborhoods built close to the edge are now exposed to both relentless wave attack from below and waterlogged, unstable ground from above. This combination of back-to-back -back storms, record tides, and heavy surf has created the exact conditions that scientists warn can push vulnerable stretches of coast towards sudden failure. Much of California's coastline is shaped by soft, layered sedimentary rocks, sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone stacked over thousands of years. These bluffs may look solid from a distance, but up close they reveal fractures loose layers, and seams of clay that can act as hidden slip planes. When waves pound the base of these cliffs, they carve out notches, hollowing the toe and leaving the upper bluff unsupported. Over time, this undercutting creates overhangs, setting the stage for sudden collapse. Rainwater seeps into cracks and weak layers, adding weight and reducing the friction that holds the bluff together. As the ground becomes saturated, Blocks of rock and soil can detach along these plains, sliding or tumbling toward the beach below. Scripps Institution of Oceanography researchers, using high-resolution mapping, have found that most unprotected bluffs along the coast are actively eroding and have the potential to fail, sometimes by several meters at once during storm years. The physical makeup of these cliffs means that, under the right stress, failure is not just possible, it is expected. Some of the most closely watched sections of California's coast are showing clear signs of movement right now. In San Diego County, the Del Mar Bluffs stand out as a high-risk zone. These sea cliffs support a heavily traveled rail line, and repeated cracking and slumping have forced emergency repairs and track closures in recent years. Engineers track ground movement here around the clock because the bluffs are made of soft, fractured rock that can fail suddenly, especially after heavy winter rains. Farther north on the Palos Verdes Peninsula, the Portuguese Bend landslide is one of the largest active slides in North America. City reports confirm ongoing ground movement across hundreds of acres, with some areas shifting by inches to several feet per year. Roads buckle, utility lines bend, and maintenance is constant as the ground responds to storms and changes in groundwater. Just upslope in the region's slide area, repeated repairs and fresh pavement cracks tell a similar story. This part of the slope is still shifting and local geotechnical maps place it firmly within the broader active landslide system. These hotspots share unstable geology, exposure to waves, and critical infrastructure built close to the edge, making them the focus of heightened monitoring and concern. Scientists and engineers along the California coast rely on a suite of monitoring tools to track exactly how and how quickly the ground is shifting. This monitoring network combines many technologies to catch early signs of movement and to give engineers time to act. The United States Geological Survey Landslide Hazards Program, along with state and local agencies, gathers data from those technologies. Airborne LiDAR uses laser pulses from planes or drones 
to create high-resolution maps of cliffs and slopes. LiDAR can detect changes as small as a few centimeters in elevation. Flights are episodic, often only after major storms or every few years, so LiDAR is not a constant watch. Satellite radar interferometry, called INSAR, helps fill that gap. By comparing radar images taken days or weeks apart, INSAR can reveal millimeter scale ground movement over large areas. Still, there is a built-in delay. Satellites pass every 6 to 12 days, and it can take weeks for processed results to reach decision makers. For faster updates, continuous GNSS stations, high precision GPS units anchored to bedrock, record shifts in position in real time, often with daily or even hourly updates. These stations are scattered along the coast, and some sit directly on known landslide zones. The most immediate warning signs come from instruments installed right at high-risk sites. Inclinometers buried in boreholes track the tilt and slip of soil layers. Piezometers measure groundwater pressure building up after rain. Survey prisms and automated total stations can detect movement in minutes, allowing engineers to respond rapidly if a slope begins to accelerate. Despite this network, scientists warn that even the best monitoring cannot predict the exact moment a bluff will fail. The data narrows uncertainty, flags zones of concern, and informs closures or repairs. But the coastline's next move is never fully certain. When ground sensors pick up a sudden increase in slope movement, or when a crack widens at the edge of a coastal road, the response is immediate and decisive. In California, Caltrans district offices operate as the nerve centers for these calls. A shift of just a few centimeters in a monitored bluff can prompt engineers to close a lane, reroute traffic, or even shut down entire stretches of highway. These decisions are not made lightly. Each closure means detours that can stretch for dozens of miles, turning a routine drive along Highway 1 into hours of inland travel for residents and delivery trucks. On the rail line above the Del Mar Bluffs, even a small uptick in ground motion triggers slow orders for trains. If movement accelerates, service is suspended until the slope is stabilized. For communities that rely on these corridors, the effects ripple out quickly. Commuters can be stranded, emergency services rerouted, and local businesses cut off from customers. Utility crews monitor buried water and gas lines in unstable zones, ready to isolate segments if sensors detect the ground beginning to pull apart. In neighborhoods perched above active slides, city inspectors track foundation cracks and flag homes for evacuation if the ground drops away beneath them. Red tags go up, and families have hours, not days, to pack and leave. Each action is grounded in protocols that weigh the latest measurements against safety margins. Caltrans spokespersons explain closures in plain terms. The risk has crossed a line, and now the priority is protecting lives and infrastructure. For those living and working along the coast, these thresholds mean that data collected in the field is not just numbers on a screen. It is the difference between a normal day and a sudden life-altering disruption. If the current storm pattern breaks and dry weather returns, saturated slopes could begin to stiffen, easing the pressure on unstable cliffs. Some roads and rail lines might reopen as engineers confirm movement has slowed, though long-term erosion would continue quietly in the background. This would allow some temporary stabilization of access in affected areas. If instead the Pacific keeps sending back-to-back -back storms, each new round of rain and surf may trigger more landslides and closures, especially along stretches already showing cracks and ground movement. Neighborhoods perched above these zones could see new detours, extended evacuations, and more urgent repairs. The risk would grow in exposed communities. The highest risk comes if a major storm, large swell, and king tide arrive together. In that case, waves could hit already fragile bluffs at their weakest point, pushing some segments past their limit. Sudden local collapses, emergency evacuations, and rapid red tagging of homes could follow. These are not certainties. Each is a real possibility as winter conditions evolve. 
In August 2019, a quiet afternoon at Grandview Beach in Encinitas turned deadly when a block of sandstone bluff collapsed without warning, burying a family gathered at the base. Three women lost their lives, and several others were injured, all within seconds. USGS geologists found no storm, earthquake, or heavy rain to blame. Instead, it was the slow work of waves and weather, weakening the bluff until it finally gave way. The cliff had shown signs of instability for years, with fractures and past minor slides noted by scientists. After the tragedy, local agencies increased monitoring and added clearer warnings, but the underlying risk remained. Even on calm days, bluffs made of soft, fractured rock can fail suddenly. Today, with more homes and infrastructure built closer to the edge and storms arriving more often, the same forces that brought down Grandview's bluff are now acting on a wider scale, raising the stakes for everyone living and working along California's coast. Today, monitoring replaces certainty along California's edge. As storms and rising seas reshape the coastline in real time, coastal communities face urgent choices about where to adapt, retreat, or rebuild. The land isn't waiting for consensus. Every high tide redraws the map. How would you respond?